Good morning, afternoon, or evening. My name is Shannon, and today we are going to be going over my spring and summer TBR now. This does not necessarily mean that all of these books are good to read in the spring and summertime, but these are all books that I really, really want to get to, and to me, this is the right time of year to do it. So let's just get started. So. The way we're going to do this is by genre. So we're going to be starting with romance first, obviously, because that is definitely my most read genre. It is just what I gravitate towards the most. Also, I just want to say that because I already made my April TBR video, I'm not going to be including any of those books. If you want to see my TBR for April, I'll link the video in the description. But the first book in the romance section is a YA book. It is Love and Olives by Jenna Evans Welch. I have read the other two books in this series. I think YA Romance is just like the perfect palette cleanser any time of year really, but this one is specifically summer themed I think. This book is about Liv and her father abandoned her when she was a child and he's from Greece and she takes this whole trip to Greece to try to see him I'm pretty sure and her father's protege Theo seems to be kind of interested. Anyhow, it sounds super cute and like something I would enjoy just as an easy book to get through if I'm feeling like I'm almost in a slump. The next two books I would like to read are specifically an author and it is Emily Henry. I have read her other two books that are published the past two days. I absolutely loved them. One of them was five stars, but you will have to watch my weekly reading vlog in order to see which one. Anywho, I am thoroughly falling in love with her as an author, and I definitely want to get to both these. They are both summer themed. This one is a friends to enemies to lovers, I believe. And then this one is a kind of workplace rivals to lovers because she is a literary agent and he's an editor and they've just never gotten along. But they both sound really good and I really hope, I mean, I know I'm going to read them sometime this summer. Next, this author is on my April TBR and I really, really want to get to this book of hers and it is Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. I've heard so many wonderful things about this book, but I know it is like a continuation of another, and so I felt that I had to read that one first, but this book is about Brianna and Jacob, and Jacob gets really nervous about first impressions. I'm pretty sure he has anxiety, but they end up having a very bad first impression of one another, and he ends up writing her a letter to which she responds and then they kind of just go back and forth and it sounds so so good and I'm wildly excited to get to this. I have now read two of Allie Hazelwood's books and I have loved them both. I think I loved Love Theoretically more than Check and Mate even but I would really like to get into more of her books and I'm pretty sure that this was her first publication. It's what got everyone interested in her. And I would greatly love to read this. I know that this is a fake dating and kind of a grumpy sunshine thing. I don't know exactly what science they do in this one. I'm pretty sure it's biology. But I did really, really enjoy the whole physics part of Love Theoretically. So I'm sure I will enjoy this too. The next book is The Roughest Draft by Austin Sigmund Broca. This book, I picked this out specifically because it reminds me of Beach Read by Emily Henry because it is about two authors who used to get along great but they ended things on bad terms and they actually have to come back together to write one last book together. It sounds really really good and I just really like the whole reading about writing aspect in certain books and I think this will be really really interesting. <sighs> Next, I've put this book off for a year and I don't think I can do it any longer. I've heard great things, I've heard really bad things. I'm very very nervous to read this book 
but it is Things We Left Behind by Lucy Score. This is the third and final book in the Knock em Out trilogy. I have been looking forward to this romance since I read the first book and I'm so scared that it will live up to my expectations and that's why I've put it off for so long but I would really really like to get to it this summer and I think I can. Then we have Crazy Stupid Bromance by Alyssa K. Adams. I have loved the first two books in this series and I'm sure the third will be no different. This book is a friends to lovers where a nerdy tech guy basically has been in love with his best friend forever and he turns to the bromance book club for help with getting out of the friend zone and i'm just so so excited to read this especially because of the title let me explain crazy stupid love is a rom-com i think it's like 2011 based emma stone ryan gosling steve carell i can't remember the mom's actress's name i'm so sorry but i legitimately love that movie and if this is anything like it as i believe it will be because of the title i will eat it up and i'm so excited to read it next if you saw my march reading wrap up you would know that i officially have dived into the world of classic literature i read pride and prejudice it is a six star read for me i'm so excited to keep reading classics and get more into that world i have put two books on my spring and summer tbr that are classics the first one is persuasion by jane austen this book i knew i wanted to read another jane austen book i didn't know which one so i did some research and from what i gathered on the internet this is the most beautiful and romantic story jane austen has ever written i'm wildly excited to read this especially after reading pride and prejudice i can't imagine how this romance can be any better than darcy and elizabeth's but i'm so excited to see anne and wentworth's romance this is a second chance romance because of their social standing her family basically convinced her not to marry this guy she was in love with when she was younger and now they kind of have a second chance and it just sounds so good and i'm so excited to read this next i i've heard so many things about this book but i would really like to try at least to read jane eyre by charlotte bronte i've heard so many quotes and so many things about how headstrong and independent the female protagonist is in this book which obviously was not very normal for that time and i'm just so excited to start reading the bronte sisters books next for a very very short chapter of this video it is the thriller slash mystery genre i have and then there were none by agatha christie what got me interested in this was in the benjamin stevenson novel everyone in my family has killed someone he went on and on about agatha christie and from my understanding there are multiple deaths in this and i think it's so much more interesting to a mystery and thriller when it revolves around multiple crimes and i'm just excited to see where it's gonna go then this is a very delayed pick but it is where the crawdads sing by delia owens i've heard so many things about this book i have watched the movie i was not into reading when i watched the movie which is why i watched it but i'm just very interested to see how this is spaced out and i've heard good and bad things about this book i would like to see how the swamp girl translates on the page if you are unaware this is a kind of mystery kind of literary fiction where a man is killed in this town and everyone blames the swamp girl because they were involved at one point but she's also just been ostracized from this community her entire life she was bullied and abandoned and just all these horrible things and has had to make her own way in the world and i just think it will be very interesting to read. 
before we go into the fantasy section i have a quick kind of literary fiction section and the first one is going to have to be malibu rising by taylor jenkins reed the main thing that intrigues me about this book is the way i heard steph bauer describe it which was it's about these kids of this family that was a very wealthy and the parents just really couldn't care less about the kids and so the oldest ended up basically raising them but they end up throwing this party in the summer and it flips back and forth to when the parents were young to this party and how the patterns of the parents are repeated in the children's behaviors and I personally have always been very very intrigued into the patterns of generational trauma and the way you turn out like your parents and I think that this will be a very very interesting book for me to read. Then we have One Italian Summer by Rebecca Searle. This book sounds so so good. It is about a girl named Katie and her mother has recently passed away and they had a trip to Italy planned two weeks after what turned out to be when her mother died and she ends up going on the trip alone because she knew that's what her mother would have wanted and she ends up seeing her mother but at 30 years old and she just has a very interesting opportunity to get to know her mother when she was still a child basically and young and I just think it'll it'll be so good next i have wanted to read this for so long it is called the wolf den by elodie harper this book is based in pompeii and anamara was the daughter of a greek doctor and after her father passed away she is kind of plunged into her mother's world and has to start working at the wolf den which is a brothel in pompeii that is run by very cool people and it just sounds like a very moving story and about like women and togetherness and all that stuff but the whole Pompeii thing is what really drew me in and I'm very excited to read this. Next we have Mary Jane by Jessica Anya Blau. This is about Mary Jane. It is based in the 1970s in Baltimore and she gets a job babysitting at a respectable doctor's house and the doctor is actually a psychiatrist who is housing a drug addict rock star and his movie star wife and it give, shows her this whole other side to the world and the way that things work and I think it sounds really really good especially since I kind of had a similar experience growing up. I grew up not too far from Baltimore in a very, very sheltered home and I ended up babysitting at an affluent person's house and it was just very, very interesting for me and I would really like to see this story. Next, we have Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Gormis. I have wanted to read this for so so long. I've seen clips of the TV show on TikTok all the time and it just sounds like such a compelling and interesting story. This book is about Elizabeth and she is a chemist and it's the 1960s. She's the only female chemist working in a very male dominated job station and just the world as it is is very male dominated and a couple things go awry and a couple years later she ends up a single mom and a tv show host for a cooking show except she describes cooking in terms of chemistry and it just i'm so excited to read it, it my description is i'm not even gonna lie but it sounds like such a compelling and moving story and I'm so excited to read it. Now I can finally get to the fantasy section. I personally feel that really high fantasy and kind of adult fantasy even is better read in the fall and winter time. So this is mostly a lot of YA fantasy. 
I've been wanting to read this for so so long. I literally had it on my TBR last month and I just didn't get around to it because I was kind of in a book slump so I only really read romance. Anywho, it is Carval by Stephanie Garber. This is about a festival basically where Scarlett's sister is kind of kidnapped for the carnival that she's been wanting to go to for years and she finally gets an invite and her sister is the star of the show pretty much and she has to find her sister but i did read the once upon a broken heart series before this i'm a little nervous about that but i legitimately loved the once upon a broken heart series and I would like to get into Stephanie Garber's writing again. Next, we have Powerless by Lauren Roberts. This is an enemies to lovers magic Hunger Games, pretty much, from what I have come to understand about it, where the elites have power. There's a whole competition dedicated to showcasing their power, and Peyton has been pretending to be one of them, and Kai, a prince, unknowingly, sends her into the purging trials when she has no magic and so obviously it gets very interesting but i'm very very excited to read this i would like to read it before the second book in the series comes out and yeah next we have the wicked king by holly black this is the second book in the cruel prince trilogy i read the cruel prince back in november and I legitimately loved it. I think I rated it 4.5 stars. I'm obsessed with Jude as a character and I have been seeing things about the second series in this universe and I really really want to get to that part so I would really really enjoy being able to finish this series. If you didn't know, The Cruel Prince trilogy is basically based on this girl Jude and her sisters. They were kidnapped when they were kids, their parents were slaughtered, and they were taken back to the Fey world where they are alienated, very much so, because they are not Fey. But I really enjoyed the first book in the series and I would like to continue it. <sighs> Next. I've heard so many bad things about this series. I could not even list them if I tried just because it's that many. But I would really like to try to give the Shadow and Bone series a chance. This is about Alina and she turns out has magical powers that can kind of save the whole kingdom and it's a very intricate and interesting magic system but when it is discovered that she has these powers she is taken into a whole new world of learning to control these powers royalty and there is a specific general that has a very keen interest in her and it's just very good and very complex and i'm i don't want to say looking forward because i've heard some really really things about this series but i'm definitely interested in how this will play out. Next we have This Woven Kingdom by Tahara Mafi. This is the same author as the Shatter Me series. I adore that series and this seems not unsimilar. It is a Persian mythology based story where Eliza is a servant but but she is also the long lost heir to the Jin kingdom and it sounds really good i always love the stories where the girl is like a complete and total powerhouse like the shatter me series and i'm just very very excited to get to it there's also an enemies to lovers and uh, i just love to harm off me then we have girl serpent thorn by Melissa Bashardust. I think this sounds very interesting. It is about a girl who is poisonous to the touch, kind of again like the Chatter Me series, but I don't quite know how to describe it. It it honestly just sounds really good if I'm being honest, where I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. Girl girl servant thorn. I am excited to read this. She's poisonous to the touch and 
as always, things get hella complicated. But I am excited to read it nonetheless. Next, we have Feybound by Sarah L. Arifi. This book sounds incredibly complex, but I'm so excited to read it. It is about Yirin and Lettle, two sisters. Yirin is a warrior for the elven army, and Lettle is a diviner, I believe, and Yirin accidentally does something that gets them exiled from the elven lands, and they end up encountering the Fae, who haven't been seen for millennia, and it just sounds so so interesting especially with these two magical species actually interacting because i feel like when you have a magic system and this kind of world typically you don't have multiple creatures like this it's kind of just a one and done thing and i'm excited to see that interact the last section of this video is just going to be a little area of me talking about books that have yet to be released that I will definitely 100% be wanting to read this spring and summer. So, first up, obviously, obviously, We have Taming Seven by Chloe Walsh. I'm so wildly excited to read Claire and Gibbsy's romance. I honestly can't even express it in words. The build-up that we have had for those two's romance is something I'm just so excited. I'm so excited for that book to come out. It comes out in like two weeks. It's going to be a very eventful week because I'm pretty sure that's the same week that Taylor Swift's new album drops. Anywho, that book is the fifth in a series of friends to lovers. They are just so irrevocably in love with each other and it's so obvious and I'm so excited to see their romance pan out. But anywho, then we have Wild Love by Elsie Silver. This is the newest book in her next series. I'm very nervous for this because I saw a snippet of it on her Instagram and it seems like there might be a cheating trope in it. But it is a single dad, brother's best friend, romance. I think it's also second chance. But I am very excited to at least give that a chance. Then we have Funny Story by Emily Henry. This is a romance where I believe exes get together. Not a second chance romance, but two couples where their boyfriend and girlfriend respectively left each other for each other and then the two that got left end up pretending to be together to make their exes jealous, I'm pretty sure. And it sounds so, so good so so good then there is reckless by lauren roberts this is the second book in the oh my god i don't even know what the series is called but powerless is the first book in the series and then this i, I don't want to say it's on my tbr but it's definitely a possibility that i reread the harry potter series the same time i did last year this year just because i didn't even do this intentionally when I was reading it last year but I read this series fully for the first time in the same week of Harry Potter's birthday and that was kind of awesome. I have a full reading vlog of me reading that series up on my channel. I enjoyed it so much just going into that world. I don't know. I may just re-read like the last three books in the series. I'm just so in love with that universe. I have been since I was a kid, but that is all. I'm basically just rambling at this point. If you guys stuck around this long, thank you guys so much. I sincerely hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. All my social media is linked down below. Make sure you turn on the post notification bell so you guys get notified right when I post a new video. I hope you all are having an absolutely wonderful morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are in the world. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.